of us watching right now agrees that it should be legal, at the very least, in a few extreme circumstances. Say, hypothetically, a young girl has been the victim of sexual assault. Well, thanks to these laws, this hypothetical girl uh, might have to travel a long distance because there were no clinics close to her. Uh, and again, thanks to these laws, the girl might be approaching the point where her state won't let her get the procedure at all. Well, sadly, none of that is hypothetical, and I'll let a Texas clinic director tell you the rest. In order to see her, I need to put her to sleep. And in order to do that, I need a nurse anesthetist. And because of this crazy law, it is impossible to find people to work for us. She's 13 years old, and she is a victim of rape, and she drove four hours from McAllen to San Antonio, and we had to turn her away. And there was nothing I could do to save her. And so now, if she has a procedure, and that if is huge, she'll have to go all the way to New Mexico and pay $5,000 and get there and spend three days. It'll never happen. We know it won't. And at that point, we have sentenced a child to motherhood. Now, that specific provider, Whole Woman's Health, is actually at the center of a Supreme Court case that will be heard next month. If it's a 4-4 tie, the Texas laws stand. So the best hope is that Justice Kennedy, seen here in dog form, <laughs> straightening his tie, will see Texas's regulation as an undue burden. This whole situation is basically in his paws now. <laughs> Meanwhile, Florida is drafting similar trap laws, and the law in Alabama that would close that one clinic near a school will be introduced to committee later this week. And if all this has made you sad or angry, then you should really keep an eye on these laws. And if you don't have a problem with the current situation, then... Well, it is 11.29. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks for rejo rejoining us, 19%. Uh, uh, quick question. What the f*** is wrong with you? But, but, no, 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 no. You know what? You know what? Putting that aside, I did promise. I made, I made a promise. I promised everyone sloths in a bucket. And that is what you are going to see. Although, if you are in that 19%, I'm going to have to insist that you cover your ears and eyes <laughs> and refuse to listen. For everyone else, it is sloth o'clock. <laughs> you are very welcome. Now, look, I know... I know this story has not been the ideal way for anyone to go to sleep on a Sunday night, but, but we thought that this was something you should really know about. And the only way that I can make it right is to give you the absolutely ideal way to go to sleep, an actual sloth in a nightcap. Here she is. Thank you so much for watching the show. Good night. On a personal level, I value the relationship I have with the minister, and there is no intention in WADA to do anything to affect that relationship. Which is an unsettlingly chummy tone for a regulator to take. If Tom Colicchio promised to judge Top Chef fairly, but then said to one contestant, I value my relationship with you, and will do nothing to affect it. <laughs> the other contestants would rightly think, this is clearly pointless, here's a hot pocket, go f*** yourself. <laughs> And at this point, I, I'm supposed to tell you that Russian officials and the former head of Araf have...